This video will introduce you to the new TubePro 5.1. This software is used to create TubeSheet map, visualize it in 3D, and create report from data recorded and analyzed in Magnify software. The software interface is very simple to use. You have basic step to follow on the right side uh, section of the screen here. You have ribbon at the top that are contextual depending on the step where you are. And you have the project browser that allows you to see different properties, again contextual to the item selected in the main window. To start a new model, it is suggested to use a template. To do that, you click New and you select New Project from Default Template. Eventually, you will be able to save your own template and use it for your report. When you use a template, there is some tube represented at the beginning when you create the, um, the first map. So those tube does not represent necessarily the tube sheet you want to draw. So you can uh, first select the tube and delete this uh, tube section. To do that, you go in the map basic step, you select the mapping tool and you can create um, uh, click the button select section so that will select once you click on the tube all the section that is represented then you can click clear map from there you can start drawing your own map there's different tool available you can add tube one by one by selecting the single uh, tube uh, uh, addition so this way you can enter your tube one by one this way. Uh, this could be quite long so uh, what I suggest is to use the block selection. So I'm gonna uh, delete this line of two by selecting an area and clear the map again and then add a block of tube. A block of tube allows you to give a section name and define numbers of row that you want and the numbers of uh, column that you want in your uh, map. You can define the tube size and the pitch that you will have uh, and the pattern uh, for the tube representation in the section. So once it is uh, selected you can click OK and the tube will be drawn. From there, you need to remove the tube that will allow you to create the map that you like. Um, there is different tools, again, that allows you to delete an area, a line, or a single tube. If the tool that are in the basic section are not enough for your need, you can always move to the advanced map section. And then you have multiple ribbons where you can uh, do different tasks. The selection ribbon allow you to do all kind of complex selection of two, delete them, or align them uh, here with different direction. The tube section will allow you to introduce two. Edit will allow you to do uh, copy and paste, rotation, symmetry to your model. And the common section here will uh, combine most of the tool that you have in the advanced map section. There is also the photo tool that allows you to detect tube from a photo and this step we're going to show that later in the demonstration. So for now I'm just going to delete the two that I don't want to fit uh, with my map and, and then we're going to start to uh, import results. In the selection ribbon, I will use the select multi function to grab multiple tube and delete them in one shot.
Once the map is created, I can look at the tube numbering, make sure it's OK. So I can show the tube number inside the circle, like this. Or I can show uh, with some line on the side, like that. If I don't see all the map, I can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out easily. And the right click of the mouse to drag my map on the screen. So this allows me to quickly validate the tomb numbering. If the order is not correct, we can change from the mapping tool again this horizontal order or uh, vertical order to make it the way we want. Once the tomb numbering is valid, I'm ready to move to the 3D model representation. So I click 3D model. In the 3D model, I have a first representation of the heat exchanger. Of course, the default parameter do not necessarily match the exact uh, heat exchanger that you have. So you can use the project properties here to edit the main parameters of the bundle. Again, the wheel mouse will allow you to zoom in and out. Left click will allow you to rotate the geometry and the right click allow you to move it on screen. So let's edit the tube sheet first. So there is the type of uh, heat exchanger so straight or U-bend and the next step is to adjust the tube length so in this case is 168 inches. So as you can see when I do that the tube length has reduced so if I want that my back tube sheet match the tube length, I need to make sure that the shell geometry is also at the same length of 168. Now I can also set my uh, tube sheet diameter. So they are circular now, they could be also rectangular. The thickness can be defined and the diameter. So I'm going to move that to something smaller that will fit what I have and the same thing for my shell geometry so if I reduce this you will see that the nozzle will also move to fit that diameter so right now I have my tube sheet set correctly with my tube the next step will be to define the support plate so there is here uh, a support plate editor when I click on this I can add different type of support plate to the heat exchanger. Let me show you uh, different things available. So if I click add, I can give a name and I can select the type of support plate I want. So they could be full support, uh, top half, bottom half, segmental uh, support plate. For example, a full support, uh, I can define the location from the front its diameter, thickness, uh, and there's multiple, I can define the number of them and the spacing. So if I click add to this, uh, apply to this, you will see my full support appearing. In my uh, current heat exchanger, I have single segmental type. It's starting at the position 18 inches and I have um, 11 of them with a spacing of 12 inches. So if I click apply, I can see now my plate. There is other parameter that you can set here to define the extent of the segmental section uh, inside the, um, the tube sheet. So this way you can adjust it exactly the way you want. And if there is other different type of support plate you can add them so if there is a full support right here at five inches you can add it by using again add then you use a full support and this one is at let's say uh, five inches from the beginning there is only one of them and if I click apply I can see it appear right there so fairly simple to use and um, when it's it's done you just click OK and your 3D model is created.
Another cool trick that is available uh, to uh, align the uh, model is to use this top uh, right corner tool here. By clicking on this, you can uh, decide to have a, a direct uh, orientation like from the front. If you click on the, on the edge, it's going to show it at 45 degree. I can click right. I can click the top edge, so it's going to move it this way. Uh, and I can uh, quickly do that. I, I, can even, I can even select the corner and it's going to select it along the corner. So if I select one angle specifically uh, and then I, let's say, I move it a bit, I can then use the uh, circle here to do a rotation using the same orientation. So a lot of flexibility on the way you select uh, and display uh, your bundle is available. To complete the model, one can also edit the nozzle uh, if required. So you can click this uh, this uh, tool and decide to define the nozzle. You can define their location their angle, uh, diameter, and length. Uh, so with that uh, you can uh, do uh, almost anything that is required to uh, position them correctly. Same thing for the U-Bend editor. Uh, there is a way to define them uh, according to the exchanger that you have. So here I only have a straight two. The third step after designing the tube sheet and the 3D model is to import the inspection data. So for that we move to inspection data and we can see here that I have a, a table, uh, an empty table containing all uh, the tube that are in my heat exchanger. So the way to import the data is to click here uh, import and replace or import and append if you're adding data to an existing report. Here since it's my first one I will just import and replace. Select the database of the um, uh, report uh, created with Magnify. If you prefer not using the database, you can also select the text file that could be created from Magnify. But the database can be directly imported. And doing this will add all the information about the defect um, inspected. Um, this is very quick step. Uh, the next step after that is to move to the drawing. The drawing uh, section uh, is already uh, positioned here. Uh, I need to refresh this drawing uh, to make sure that it's going to contain the new... In fact, the new section is not there, so I'm going to delete this one, which is the, the one from the template. And from the project browser, I move into the, um, um, the project area and I select the uh, single tube sheet section view here and I click and drag it right on the document and I can get my uh, tube section uh, added to the document. So I can change the size uh, for exactly what I want to see in my um, page. This layout is um, uh, what is created by default from the template. So you can see a legend here uh, and some information. Those information are fields that are coming from the project properties. So if I go to the project properties, I can see here uh, the client information, the job information, the inspection. So those fields here are linked with the um, table at the bottom. So if I change the company name for company XYZ and I click enter, uh, the value is changed here right away. Uh, this is the inspection company. So if I'm going here and I change here this for edify, uh, I get the edify name put there. So we can have the logo also added there. 
So all those fields are available to be placed in the page. So this is uh, the default template, but someone can change that structure and put the information that you want based on um, the inspection done. Uh, in this area, uh, we have the legend and the tube section. Uh, there is a way to edit them. Um, if I want to edit the way the data is displayed here, I can double click on the section itself. So I select, double click on it, and then I can define few things related to the section. For example, I can assign a specific legend to it, and I can define uh, what kind of row numbering I will see on each side and at the top and the bottom of the, uh, the map. For example, if I want to see on the left row and tomb number like it is now, but I don't want to see anything on the right side, I can come here and say no, none. So there will be no tube. I can remove the line, so the row line are only on the left side. And I can decide the interval to be uh, different if I want. So right now it's at 5, I can make the interval at every 2. So you see here right now how it looks. So you can customize that um, so that it looks exactly like what you want. Uh, and you can also add a uh, numbering for the tube. So for example, I can add um, line at the top or at the bottom. I can also decide to add um, number in the tube. For example, if I do that, I can see um, some numbering appearing in the tube uh, at the interval that it's determined here. So different way of uh, fine-tuning this and um, once you're happy with what is, is, uh, is available you just have to click OK and your drawing will be updated. So this is the drawing called default number two. So this drawing could be renamed differently and it's going to appear in the project list here as the uh, a, a drawing right here. So this can be slide in your report anytime uh, later on while you're doing your uh, editing. The legend, it's a bit the same way. You can double click on it and decide to edit uh, the values. So you can change the color that is represented, you can change the defect range, uh, you can change the shape of the um, symbol that is displayed. For example, if I select the plug and I click on edit, I can see that this uh, symbol plug is used when the code egal, uh, is the same as PLG uh, and I have the shape call number two but I could have different shape for example a triangle I can decide to have a different color so if I want it to be um, red I can do that and then my plug become a red triangle so uh, all kind of way to um, edit the value so I will go back to the black square and if you look at the um, depth range uh, and edit one you will see how it is made so basically it's a name it's a caption and you define different conditions so here you can see that uh, any tube that has the percentage value greater than a value 30 or less than 40 will be used, uh, will be displayed with this color. So editing those range is very easy. You can click on a number and change the value. Um, if it's not the value percent that you want to evaluate, but another column uh, information like the position or uh, the voltage, you can decide on what field you're looking at and custom design the condition uh, that you want to uh, meet for the legend. So I will not do more editing than that, just to show you that there is all kind of settings that could be 
adjusted. I'm going to increase the font size so it's going to look bigger and click OK. And now I have my um, legend here. So once the drawing is made, and you can have multiple drawing, so this is one drawing with one legend, but you can add new drawing uh, by duplicating this one or by adding a new one. And when you do that, you will have several pages, and you can decide to have one drawing to show the defect, one drawing to show, let's say, the plug, uh, or different things. And these, each drawing will be available later to put in your report. Once the drawing is done, you can move to the last step, which is the report generation. So the report is based on a template the template I loaded at the beginning of this demonstration. Uh, it is typically a Word document and as you can see here this Word document has a, a title page with a logo and different information and a table of content and different information. So right now you see that this is my 3D model, uh, the drawing of it. This is my uh, drawing page I just made and then there is a summary where you can see a graphic of the uh, defect found in my heat exchanger. Here they are area of text that you can fill by yourself so you can put some information about the inspection technique, recommendation, photos, instrument, uh, certification. Uh, you can think about all kind of information to put there. The data report is typically the tabular report that uh, is generated from all the results imported. Right now, this tabular report shows all the column uh, in the um, imported uh, data, but if I want to see less column, it's possible to edit that by double-clicking the uh, table and decide to hide some column. So when we do that, um, not, not hiding, but uh, using the column list, and then you can uh, move what you don't want to see. So for example, if you don't want to see um, the file name, you move it there. Let's say uh, we don't want to have the remaining, remaining wall, and the nominal is not required, the tube OD also. So we have only row, tube, percentage code, the actual wall, let's say we remove that, vault degree channel, landmark, location, and comment. So let's say this is what I want, so I can click OK, and my table will be uh, updated with uh, the new value. Uh, I can edit the size so that it's going to fit better my page. So all the table are, uh, all the results are listed in this tabular format after that. So as you can see, this um, report has been automatically generated for you. It's like a Word document and you can directly type in it and edit it the same way as you edit a Word document. So if you look at the ribbon at the top, you have the home ribbon here where you can change the font, um, you can insert uh, tables, pictures, you can change your page layout, uh, you can add some references like a, a table of content, things like that. The cool thing about the template also is you can have a lot of text that are related to the project properties. For example here, the um, uh, company name here, uh, I did the mistake when I typed it, but this is this is a field in fact that is in the report that is updated um, when I type here. So if I use the company, the client name 10 times in the report, just by changing it here, it's going to be updated every place it is positioned in the report after that. Adding a new field to the report is very simple. For example, to add the address just before the, uh, the city, I can come 
uh, make a new line here type the address now having the address here uh, to include this this address in the report I just click and drag on the field itself so moving it right there bring the value of the field directly in the report so if my address appear four times in the report each time I update the value for a different customer it's going to be updated everywhere in the report so the, the concept is that you use the report uh, as a word document if you need to add a, a new drawing for example a new 3d drawing you go to the project you select your 3d model you click and drag it right in the document that will make it appear and from there you can double click on it and edit the configuration how you want to see it so let's say you want to see it from the side you want to uh, remove the tube um, and just see the defect in it so you can come in the tube section and uncheck the section so you can see now all the defects where they are located in the tube uh, and get the representation of that so all kind of uh, configuration you can do to fine-tune the representation of uh, your tube sheet so it's up to you to adjust it the way you like and once you're set you can uh, click OK and that view will be updated in your report for each type of object you have in the project you can have multiple uh, view of the same one so the 3d model right now I have only one view so each time I edit it it's gonna be translated everywhere in the report but if I add other 3d views they can be edited individually same thing for the 2d map or the drawing section if you have multiple they will have you will see multiple drawing in here so you just have to click the element and drag it into the report so this is um, a very brief introduction to uh, the new 2 Pro 5.1 but the key thing to remember is that the software is uh, very friendly to be used five simple step with basic um, map creation, model uh, creation in 3D, importing data, creating the drawing page and finalizing the report as you do a report, uh, a Word document uh, normally. Uh, regarding the report itself, something cool is let's say you want to start with your own template that you already have for your company, you can load it from here and uh, 2 Pro will be able to load a Word document so it's going to appear exactly like your Word document and you can start dragging and dropping different variables to make it uh, the way you like and at the end you can uh, save the project as a template by using save as so the next time you use it you can use your template to create uh, another project Thanks for your attention.